Thank you, thank you. I know we're eager to get through this and I'm eager to get started and so I thought I'd just get right into it. Um, the way we like to in politics with a question. So I'm very curious how many of you watch ad-supported OTT on a regular basis? Okay, and how many of you saw a political ad from this fall? Okay, so for many of us who didn't, I'm gonna catch you up on what we were doing. So to set the stage, back 10, 15 years ago, political budgets were determined by the biggest ego in the room. They would say, well, you're just gonna spend 60% on broadcast and 30% on digital and 10 on mail. And that's kind of just the way it was done. We had to make ads, turn them around sometimes from development to on the air in eight to 10 hours. We were trying to get 1,000 gross rating points a week, sometimes two or three behind messages, trying to keep up with our opponents. And like you know, we were advertising based on geography and demographics, and it was pretty much 30 second spots. So fast forward to now. Instead of the biggest ego in the room, it's usually data. Data's become king. It tells us how to advertise, where to advertise, how to set our budgets. We still have to move really quickly, eight to 10 hours, turning around spots, but instead of just 30, we're doing six, 15, 30 minute. And it's to different audiences, too. So data's made things more simple, but also more complicated. Also, we are targeting individuals instead of just geographically. And so that kind of brings me into OTT and why in political we love it. Because we do get to reach the audience in a very specific way. And we get, of course, we all know this, to reach an audience that's no longer on linear and has the cable subscriptions. And we also can offer more frequency to high value targets. So I wanted to start up with a case study from this last cycle. This was a statewide race for governor. We had been up on OTT just targeting cordless segments. And we had been in the primary runoff. This is general election. And we were underperforming. Polling was telling us we were underperforming with independents, especially independent women. So we bought more impressions toward them. We um, got with a subscriber that had a large independent women base. And this is the ad we showed. Dad says state government's a mess. He says our room is a mess too. I just cleaned it. He wants to get Oklahoma's financial house in order. Get the economy picking up and get rid of government waste. Invest in our schools and our teachers. Please give our dad the job of fixing Oklahoma. Maybe he'll stop giving us jobs like these. Doubt it. Oklahoma's right now starts right here. Right now. OK, so that was successful. We did see an increase in that segment. So it was a good use of OTT, I think. Another reason we love it. How many kids do you have? Six. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a pressing question. Yeah. <laughs> right, yes, they were very busy. Were there more? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was it. You got to see them all. So it also answered the efficiency problem. And this is for um, congressional races. This is a big thing for those of you that don't know, a congressional district has about 700,000 people. So to advertise in a DMA, especially an expensive one like New York, is, just makes no sense. So we have a client that we've worked for for years that's in the New York DMA, and this year we were able to do OTT, get on some broadcast channels for them. Um, in, in the New York DMA. And so that was a fun use. I could, we did a whole bunch of different segments and different um, advertising, I could go into it. But in the 
essence of time here, we'll just move on. This is something that everybody's been talking about. It's been breaking down the walls between traditional and digital. And I think OTT is such an exciting space to be in, and it's moving our industry forward. And so I think it's summits like these, you know, we're having to talk, and within the agency, we're talking to. And I think OTT is a great place where it's bringing everything together. So back to the whole data thing, I thought I'd take you through how we do buying in the political world at our agency and how the data, when I've been talking about it, for us, it's the voter file. It's really what drives things. And so when we go into a campaign, we look, we try and get a broad look at what the audience might look like. And we use um, software now, cross screen media software, to kind of just give us an overview. This is actually likely voters in New York. And it used to be in political that we were really, the voters were 50 and over. And you can see that their media mix how they're spending their time on the screen is much different. In the past few cycles, the younger audience is much more engaged in voting. And you can see from this, I mean, 176 CTV index. They're spending their time a little bit differently, so our approach has to be different, too. So we'll get a general view, and from that, we'll get an idea of how the budgets might work out. And this is an example of a specific voting segment from the Evansville DMA. And you can see here, Broadcast but is still you know, affordable. But just kind of give us an idea of how to reach a specific audience, what the best media mix and budget might look like. Now, this changes as the campaign goes on. So like I started off with you guys, we'll usually start a campaign with a benchmark poll just to get an idea of what the voters in that area are concerned about. And then that is then modeled out over the whole voter file and we'll drill down into some audiences and um, develop specific messages for them. Now here, as a buyer, this is when I start RFP, if I'm going into an IO situation. And so the device ID matching can happen and we can start targeting. And this whole time, the creative's being developed and for the specific target and overall brand message and then we start delivering to the audience. Now this process goes on and on and on throughout the race very quickly. Things are changed and then that slide, the slides I just showed you get a little bit more specific and change as we go on. I don't know what I just did there. I might have pressed the wrong button. Okay, so this is another case study from this last cycle. This was a congresswoman from Indiana, and we had done a benchmark poll, and we had an overall audience of about 260,000 people we were reaching with a general brand message. But within that, we identified four specific audiences that needed some attention, and we developed creative just for them that we showed on OTT as well as digital. And this is an example of one of those. And I would like you to think while you watch it what audience I was trying to target. Early detection is a lifesaver. So why wouldn't a mammogram be covered for the young women who need it most? Susan Brooks worked with Republicans and Democrats to make a law that ensures that young women like my daughters are covered. So was it this guy? No. So. We were really trying to target women in, for that creative. And so this brings me into some of the problems that we saw in OTT from this past cycle. Expanding our audience, look like targeting, just doesn't work. We, if we are trying to target an audience, we need that creative to go into it. So if an audience expansion needs to happen for pacing or whatever, I need to know so I can give you different creative. I would totally have given that guy different creative um, than who, you know, the, the audience. So anyway, that was a big, big thing. And just like this last panel talked about, 
when creative and the buyers, the plannings are not working together, things are just not gonna be delivered the way it's most efficiently delivered. And this is an example of a really good creative. This was down ballot from a very intense Senate race. And she has, our candidate had a really good message that she needed to get out to independent people. And OTT was a really good way to do it. We just needed more time than we actually, actually could have. So here was the message. Some jobs are just flat out fun. I can't Take wait. state audit. Yes, internal controls. We're implementing new ones. Wow! I love seeing these numbers increase. They're becoming so engaged. Cool beans. Look at these savings. Yes, you guys are doing great. Uh, who knew a CPA could have so much fun reviewing processes in state government? I know it's a new idea, but I think it's going to save us time and money in the long run. Okay, then. Uh, yes. <laughs> well. It's working. Indiana is now one of the leading states for financial stability and transparency. It's Indiana Transparency Portal. Check it out. Building trust, great customer service. You've seen the new Transparency Portal, right? It's amazing. Can you believe it? Tara Klutz, Indiana's first CPA Auditor of State, making the auditor's office more modern, transparent, accountable, and apparently, well, pretty exciting. Okay, so that whole ad also brings me into one of the next things that transparency, I think, goes really well into the thing that nobody liked to admit, but there is fraud in OTT. Um, there's fraud in digital, and just denying it or not talking about it does no good. And being a political buyer, I mean, I need my impressions to be delivered to who they need to be delivered to, not the bad guys. And so some of, some of the providers have, you know, money back, fraud-free guarantee. Well, in political, that does me no good after election day, especially if my candidate lost. Like, here's some money back. Sorry, this was not taken care of during the race. So working together, I think, with the buyer and there being transparency, we can nip the fraud in the bud. We can identify if it's happening. Um, but just saying, oh, no, no, we have it all taken care of, don't worry about it, isn't kind of where we want to be going. I think just keeping it upfront and transparent um, would really help. And so we've talked about this before. For us in political, I had some races. This actually kept me up some nights. Um, we're pacing, we just weren't pacing. Some of our targeting was very granular and we're waiting for those people to get online and click and see the ad and they just weren't doing it. And so I think when we enter into an agreement, a conservative estimate on impressions is much better than the maximum impressions. And we can always add more, but I don't want, you know, we talked about um, over delivering and stuff, I don't want my frequency caps to be ignored just because of a pacing problem, because we do want that good experience. So that was another thing for OTT that I did have a little bit of issues with. Thankfully, all my campaigns did end up delivering. And um, so, but it, we did have some trouble with that. And so as I'm starting to close, we've been talking about data, and targeting and planning all being extremely important. But it's not everything. Um, this example is not from the midterms. It was from the presidential. And I know for a lot of us in this room, it seems like just yesterday. And it's raw. But this is an example. This was um, a Joss Whedon ad. And it was a celebrity video. And, uh, in case you don't remember it, this is a cut down version just to remind you. On Tuesday, November 8th, this country will make one of the most important. The most important. The most important decisions in its history. You have a chance. You have an obligation. To be a part of that decision. You might think it's not important. You might think you're not important. So when we heard that you think you're not important, we knew we needed to respond quickly. 
in political advertising, we're trying to motivate people to do something. We're trying to fire them up. And so we knew that we needed to do something right away to respond to that. And so there was no time for data to tell us this. We just did it. We posted it on YouTube, and within 48 hours, it had over 15 million views. And this was the response. Thanks, famous actors, because it's times like these when we realize just how lucky we are to have famous Hollywood actors. To guide us. To guide us. They know stuff we just don't know. Stuff we can't know. Because we're not famous actors. And they're not just acting smart. They are smarter. And thank goodness they made it clear that we must vote for Hillary. I could have made a terrible mistake without their help. I thought Clinton deleting all those emails was dishonest and corrupt. And put our national security at risk. But now we know it was all just an accident. Just an accident. It was just an accident. An accident that could happen to any of us. I mean, who among us couldn't accidentally hit the delete button 30,000 times? 30,000 times? 30,000 times. Okay, so in conclusion, we've heard this whole summit that data can inform our decisions, it can direct our decisions, it can validate our decisions. But one thing we know that data does tell us is creativity can trump everything. So with that. We have time for some questions. Yeah. Hi. Um, I was just curious about what the fraud was you were seeing in OTT. Um, was it bot fraud, or was it just that the ads weren't going to the right people? Well, fraud that I saw with an example would be we were getting a lot of impressions on an anime channel. And being a, a buyer, like I knew that, you know, 20,000 impressions in a day to this channel was not right. And, you know, it's like, no, 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 they're just like almost like that creative. There's no, there's no fraud in OTT. It's like that's where your audience is, is. That's what they're watching. And I knew that target independent women audience were just not watching that much anime. So that would be one example. So is that more of an issue with the partner you were working with? Yeah, who is defrauding you, the, the, the seller or, the, or, or, right. or you know, bad actors? Yeah, because that, I guess when I think of fraud, I think of bot fraud or not real people seeing my ad rather than your, the partner putting you in programming, that is not where you want to be. Well, it was based kind of, I think, on pro programmatically, and it was supposed to be, you know, these people are tuning in. So it could be also other, other things would be um, Roku channels or whatever, looking like a Roku device was, but it really wasn't. Or um, too many impressions served to a certain IP address, I also saw that. And the more transparent, the more I could look and be like, this isn't, this isn't what our audience is doing or whatever, and we could nip it in the bud. Um, and then make sure that the impressions were, if it was 10,000 impressions, being actually served to the right audience and stopping that. Since, since, this, since the OTT channel can be used in, in targeting a level, especially with a voter file, of a level of, of, of precision that's closer to social than it is to traditional linear, um, how did you view the messaging and the, and the goal here? Since um, very often on social, the goal for political advertising is, is often activating the base and getting out the vote uh, or firing up the base. Um, was th were these pers it looked like you were doing persuasion ads on OTT, even though you were, I mean, you were able to target um, your own base mm -hmm. there. Well, for OTT, we used it more not, we were, you know, you have your two ends that you don't need to worry about. The people are definitely going to be out voting for your candidate, and the people are definitely going to be out voting against your candidate. And so we really tried to use OTT to to be an independent message. So to, uh, to kind of 
you know, so you were trying form. to move the needle in, in terms of, you, you were trying, the, these were persuasion ads yes. as opposed to others, because I, I think when we did our political event in January, one of the things we were hearing from the last cycle was how much social was focused on activating the base and less as a persuasion uh, channel this time, and TV was being used more as a persuasion channel. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? What were some of the, how much was, was context at all important here? Within OTT, were you picking and choosing particular uh, shows, channels, were you, uh, was context Im important to effectiveness? Or were you simply going for, the, the tar was the targeting really driving this? Targeting really, really drove us. Um, every once in a while, I would, not want to have the overnight day parts. Mm -hmm. I like to try and stop those because I wanted my audience to hopefully be in a good mood when they were seeing the ad. Mm -hmm. So um, not, you know, not being able to sleep and then being served the political ads, I did try to stay with, away from that, but I did try and trust the targeting as much as I could. You weren't able, and some, as we were talking about OTT yesterday, one of the things that, that people discuss is the ability to tie uh, OTT exposures to online behaviors. Were you doing any back, I know that, I know there's limited visibility and, and, and the ways that political campaigns work and how they actually can measure effectiveness, but in this case, were you able to connect OTT exposures to any other kinds of online behavior or hit them again with display ads or other types of vid online video ads so that you, were, you had either a cumulative effect or you had a sense that you were moving the needle of activity and interest in somebody? When we were doing some of the, the digital buying too, sometimes um, the candidate will have a different targeted victory or another company doing digital and we're doing um, more of the linear and OTT maybe video. Um, when we were doing the digital too and I was partnering with the digital platform to do the OTT, we could see a little bit more, but mostly it's offline polling. You know, is, is the brand awareness going up in a particular audience offline? I'm, I'm gonna put you, I'm sorry, this might put you on the spot because this, mm -hmm. this is a really hard question that we always work, ha have a problem with here is, you, Brave Ender Cox is working with other, can, I mean, you're, is working with brands as well and public mm -hmm. affairs. Mm -hmm. How are you able to take the specific lessons from working on political campaigns in, in OTT and where are they applicable to other kinds of categories? Well, just speaking from an OTT buyer's perspective, yeah. it's a little, my little areas. I think it's targeting specific audiences. It's so powerful and good. And there's some video development that's just you know, it's kind of meant for that environment, like that Tara Klutz, the auditor. So, but others, it's just too general. It's not really gonna do a lot of, a lot of. MA, that also is applicable, say, to retail, where, say, they're trying to Right. 